Today, we're gonna make buffalo chicken pizza. So we're gonna use that same grandma dough that we made in the first episode of this series. And I have a dough ball right here. This is the dough we're gonna use. And the first thing we're gonna do before we start our chicken or anything like that is let's get the dough in the pan here. You can take your dough and you don't have to store it like I have. You can put it straight in the pan and you can put it in the fridge that way too. I'm gonna to put oil in here, just like we did for the regular grandma, just like we did for the vodka grandma. Grandma pizza has a lot of oil. The bottom of the pizza almost fries in the oil. It gives you that really crispy edge, that uniquely grandma flavor that you get when you walk into a pizzeria in New York. I don't change my formulation on my dough. This dough recipe will make a really good New York round. It will make a really good Sicilian pie and it will make a really good grandma pie that we're doing today. I like to keep it the same so I don't have to have three or four recipes. It tends to stick more in, in the aluminum pans than it does if you use a plastic. Okay. So this isn't gonna stretch right now. Well, that's fine. It's gonna warm up and it's gonna be able to be stretched really, really easily in a little while. You gotta put plastic so it doesn't skim over. Put this off to the side and pre let's prepare the chicken right now. Here's some chicken thighs. And we're gonna season these up with one teaspoon of kosher salt. Do it on both sides. And about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and some pepper about a half a teaspoon also. All right, so flip these over, do it all on the other side. Mix that all together, let them get really seasoned well. While we wait for the dough to stretch out completely, let's just go over the remaining ingredients. And they're fairly simple. We have Frank's red hot sauce, blue cheese. There's, there's a few different ways to do this. Some places will use chunks of it and they'll put it on and let it cook in there. That's fine, you can do that. I like to drizzle it on right at the end. We're gonna use the same two ingredients that we use pretty much for all the grandma pizzas. And this is Pecorino Romano. And that's gonna get a little sprinkle towards the end. And here's our garlic oil. So I love to drizzle this on top. The longer you let it sit, the stronger it's gonna get. And this is low skim mozzarella. Now, part skim, not low skim. Low moisture part skim mozzarella. This will make it uh, less buttery. All right, so that's all the sliced mozzarella. And uh, you know, some pieces are like, that's a real thick one and that's a real thin one. So it'll be okay. Well, let's give our dough another stretch. Well, right before we sear that chicken. Sometimes it takes two to three stretches. If it gets a little too sticky, depressed, just squeeze a little bit of olive oil on top of it. Just cover it back up and then we'll be able to stretch it to the final size right after we do our chicken. When we cook this chicken here, we want to get a sear, only a couple minutes worth. We don't want to cook it all the way through because this chicken's going to cook for another 18 minutes in the oven. So all this chicken has the salt and pepper, gall cutters bring out a lot of moisture and it. it's very wet again. So just keep it a pat dry before you put it right in the pan here. Probably gonna have to do about two batches worth. They only need a couple minutes per side. Just a little bit of olive oil, it'll kind of skate on the bottom and that's when you know that you're ready for searing. Okay. See that? Resist the urge to overcook it here. So even if it doesn't get nice and golden, it's okay. All right, and then take them off and get them off to the side. 
work in batches, and then when it's all done, let them sit for a few minutes, and then you'll be ready for the next step. Let's cut it all into basically one inch squares, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And as you cut them, you can put them in a bowl because we're gonna toss them with the buffalo sauce. See when I cut this, see how it's raw on the inside still? That's okay because if we incinerate it and cooked it all the way through, then, and we put it in, we're gonna cook, this pizza takes 18 to 19 minutes to cook. It would be overcooked. And remember, we're cooking it at 440. 440 at 18 minutes for chicken thighs is enough to cook them. And this is roughly two pounds of chicken. So if you have one and a half pounds, it'll be fine too. But I find that with, with this size pizza, it's probably a good amount. But if we have any left over, you can use that for another purpose. But just remember, it's not cooked. So you will have to cook it again then. And in one cup of buffalo sauce, And don't worry, if you think it's too much here, you can just drain a little bit before it goes on and just get them coated really well. All right, so this is the third time now with the dough, it, it's gonna stretch out finally. And now we can start assembling the pizza. It's much warmer, It'll it's gonna go right into place now. And you just squirt a tiny bit of olive oil you can put it on your hands or you can put it right on top of the dough so that it doesn't get stuck to you too much. All right, we're gonna start putting the cheese on in order to like just keep that corner because they're still trying to pull away a little bit. I'm just gonna get my corner exactly where I want it, okay? Push that dough right where I want it. And I'm gonna put my piece down right there. I'm gonna lock it in and I'm gonna put it about a quarter inch to a half inch off the side. And just layer all the subsequent pieces uh, as a shingle pattern. And if you have sliced mozzarella, it's way easier than doing it this way. I didn't have it, so this is what I'm working with today. And You'll find that a lot when you're cooking, you'll just have to make, you have to make like executive decisions, you'll have to change it up. And that's the art of learning how to cook. All right, so it's all, it's all completely covered with the mozzarella, the shingle pattern. And now we can put the chicken on. Now I'm looking right here, the size of it, we probably have too much chicken, that's fine. If you decide to use this chicken later on, just you have to cook it through, you can put it right back in a pan and you can cook it. And I'm just using my hands to kind of get it to arrange it perfectly where I don't want any spot with too many pieces and I don't want any like open spots really either. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit more of the sauce on, the buffalo sauce. In addition to that, all the buffalo sauce and the chicken, I'm gonna put some of that garlic oil on top now. I'm just gonna drizzle it across. Not too much, but definitely enough. We're going to cook it for eight minutes at 440 degrees. Then we're gonna turn it around and cook it for roughly another 10 minutes, okay? So it's about 17, pull it out, and then we're gonna finish it up with some cheese and if we're gonna check if we need any more sauce, we can take fresh sauce and we can add it to that at that point. Mm -hmm. 
If you want more sauce on it, now is the time to put it on. Otherwise, just go with the Pecorino. And if you want a little bit crispier on top, you can put it in the broiler for one to two minutes, one to two minutes under the broiler, or about two, three minutes at regular 440. Keep an eye on it the whole time, especially if you put it in the broiler. Save that blue cheese to the end. Let people drizzle their own on. So the next one that's going to come up right after this will be, this is Calabrese hot pepper. It's like a hot pepper or chili oil. And then these are boar's head cupping pepperoni. So this is natural casing boar's head. And these are great. This is going to make a really spicy grandma pie with a ton of pepperoni over it. And that episode is coming up next. You should go watch it and see you next time.